Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Hello to another StarCraft cast by JJ. This game is just another game from Aces Tournament. I remind you, Team Aces Tournament called Team Sports Cup. Finally made that right name correctly. And this game is going to be between Team Mouse and Mouse's Mana in the bottom right corner and Axiom's Crank, the fine player in the upper left corner. Both player playing, playing Protoss. So. We're going to have a PvP, obviously, and this matchup, as I assume most of you know, or perhaps some of you don't, there's also a possibility, this matchup tends to be incredibly vo volatile, explosive and combustive. It is amazing, it's awesome, <laughs> it's fun to watch. M most of the Protoss players usually actually say that they don't enjoy a PvP that much because uh, of its unpredictable nature, of its uh, tendencies to, 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 to for all early uh, rushes, uh, attacks like that. You can see Mana has, was already scouting in his base thinking about something possibly funny or fishy. Although in my opinion that was just a misclick, that would be a little paranoid at that point to do something like that in the game. So, it's... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, Aces Team Sports Cup and Team Sports Cup has thus far produced some amazing games, some truly incredible and powerful games. Now, this is quite interesting. Mana has made a really early assimilator, which begs the question what is he going to do with all the mm, excessive gas? Because he will certainly have way too much gas when his cybernetic core finishes to simply. Uh, start a uh, gateway project and uh, eventual Starker or even Sentry. Well, actually, it suggests some sort of tech. Well, second assimilator made already, and Crank already with two assimilators of his own. When it comes to units, both have equal amount of pros. Crank a little less, perhaps uh, one chrono boost less, and that is the fact we can see Mana is using the chrono boost more often and in greater ratio in order to to pump out maximal amount of probes ASAP. Now, gateway already being started, I mean warp gate already being started for both players. Standard play, Crank has saved up that chrono boost straight for that cybernetic score and now Mana is scouting. He will probably utilize patrol command to just walk around the base as long as possible. Uh, though he might actually decide not to overstay Will's welcome because he knows Starker is inbound and the moment that Starker comes out, well, your scouting probe might be in quite a lot of trouble. An early Mama ship core from Crank, that's a good decision in my personal opinion, um, because Crank has seen Mana's two gateways to assimilators as well, but he can't uh, can't exclude some potential uh, uh, aggressive tacking. Uh, and why is that so? Ooh, some sort of lag. Well, simply put, two gate assimilators might suggest some sort of aggressively placed. Yeah, you can see he's scouting a uh, stargate because he didn't see a third pylon. Now, where is that third pylon? Is there even a third pylon? No, not yet. So. That might have been an... Oh, here it is. Here's the third pylon, so that might have been an option, actually. We can see uh, Crank's target being placed here, and that's pretty typical. Mm, unless one of the sides goes something ballistic, uh, extremely and ape aggressive and apeshit wild, like uh, Blink Starker Rush or Photon Cannon attack, we usually were going to see Sky Tars in this matchup. Why? Because Void Rays. Yes, that's the unit. Void Ray is good against everything that Protoss has. It's good against Void Rays, it's good against Stalkers, it's good against Tempest, Carriers, um, Archons, every single unit that Protoss can put, 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 put out out of his production facilities, Void Ray is a counter to. It's in fact so ridiculous that some players actually think that Void Ray is bound to expect some sort of nerf and some sort of change in the near future because <laughs> this frankly is quite ridiculous if you think about it uh, for a moment or two. Now when it comes to units we see 28 probes from mana uh, a lot less by Crank but he is sending that oracle as a sort of bargain and a bet and he's going to try and uh, do as much harass as virtually possible. Now M mana has chosen a different tech path interestingly enough he's not going to go for 
air unit. So we can see Mana has uh, sniped out uh, incredibly well uh, the enemy's Mana ship and he's going on straight for Starkers but at what cost Crank is dealing a lot of damage. Mana is using his proxy pattern to reinforce his army and that is going to be bye bye for Crank's Stalkers. Now we can see a lot of exchanges being made. Crank is losing this battle and he is not in the best of positions. Mana is trying to get a good shot, good aim, but not in that case. A proxy pylon by Crank. How the hell did he manage to pull that here? I don't know. He was probably used the, op the opportunity for him to be preoccupied. And now those casualties are massive. Six workers already killed with consumers last. We can see Crank is getting on the offensive here. Oracle has dealt as much as uh, Taras as possible. He is not going to live past that and he's past due to service time. He's dead. Now those Zealots are going to be cleaned up by Starkers. Starkers versus Zealots usually favors Zealots heavily. We can see that the lost tab is practically gone equal. And is even a little ahead for mana, but we can't forget about 10 probes being killed. It shows it's painful. Probes are now absolutely equalized, so we can actually say that Crank didn't spend that money on probes, as opposed to mana. He didn't expand as well in that time, he just used Oracle and an aggressive proxy pylon inside the base to get the best of him. 10 probes are a bit setback, are a big setback, excuse me very much. And that's a problem for Mana, he is now unable to expand in my opinion, just as comfortable as he would like it to be. He might of course risk it, there's no reason why he shouldn't. He knows the enemy has played his hand, he showed what he's going, he's going for Stargate, so there's no threat of DT Harass. There's going to be potential of a lot of Void Rays in the near future. Both players have decided to start an expansion after this first initial exchange, probably suggesting us a more macro-oriented game style. Now, we can see uh, probes being grouped up by Mana, which is an interesting decision. Uh, some Stark is being sent in aggressively, and most of his units are not grouped out in any control group. Interesting, worth to see and worth to remember. Now, uh, same thing, uh, same thing actually for, um, well, not the same thing for Crank, because he's got all his well, usual army here. A scouting Phoenix instead of a hallucination right here, going straight into target, checking out what the hell is going on around, and Crank has lost another of his proxy pylons, that must have hurt. That must have been a problem. Now, two more gates being added to create a four gateway situation. This Phoenix has got to get out of there. He sees a pylon. He will keep in mind that some sort of tech might be placed here. He knows the enemy has a robotics facility, so he is expecting, I believe, some colossi in near future. And he might actually prepare accordingly to such a scenario, which might surprise him because, well, Mana has decided to go Twilight Council, mm, a lot of gateways, he should add a forge to that immediately to start working on upgrades. Crucial uh, crucial object and subject in, in any matchup, even in PvP, where, uh, where we must remember that Protoss army is very bursty, it's it has a lot of initial fast firepower, which usually tends to give it a little edge over uh, other max races, especially at higher levels of tech. But mm, those upgrades come in real importance in a mirror matchup when both players can, are as, as just as durable as Protoss are and both have that tendency to burst. Now three Phoenixes, that means another air, air, air harass, but not in that case, two Starkers are already here, Two probe, one probe is going to be taken out and immediate use of Photon Overcharge on this Nexus which did not result in any kill, so 100 energy used, a probe killed, that phoenix took some damage, but it's not deadly, lethal or critical. Now, they might actually go and try around here, but there are some stalkers here as well, Mana knows what he's doing, he's planning that extremely well, he is not creating one giant death ball, both players started upgrades at exactly the same time, that, that's well played, that's a good idea, that's how it should be. Now, Templar Archives made, so we are going to see Archons most likely as there's no Psystorm on the way. That's a good idea. Archons are very potent in this matchup, especially if you're going to face a lot of Zealots. Well, that might not be exactly a case in that in this scenario. Well, good use of mm, vision by Oracle to detect any possible, you know, um, um, observer. Well, unfortunately, unknown, un unknown to him, the observer is a little deeper inside the enemy's base. Now, is he going to be detected? Unfortunately, no. He is not. Well, unfortunately for Crank, 
and very fortunately for mana. Now, Clank also doesn't want to limit his technology only to air units, so he's also making the robotics facility and the mana has started working on charges. I believe that in this matchup uh, upgrades, not only damage upgrades, but tech upgrades such as charge, blink, side storm, extended thermal lance of course, those upgrades are usually incredibly crucial in, in terms of how the matchup is going to far and extend. Uh, interesting decision by Mana, he decided to go to for a little faster sort of expand than his enemy and let's see if that actually shows on the army tab. And we can see that yes, Crank has a definitely stronger army for all at the time. Three Void Rays, mm, just look at it, uh, yeah, three Void Rays, three Phoenixes, uh, some Starkers and Zealots. Now his enemy has got four Archons now, so <laughs> mana is pretty safe. Archons are not going to die quickly to anything that Crank can produce for the time being. Nothing whatsoever is for the deadly, killer and dangerous. Now, Robotics Bay started by Crank, interestingly enough, he is going from Sky Units into Colossus technology. Um, not exactly sure why, we can see Void Rays have activated the Prismatic Alignment a little early, I think that is to destroy those rags, but I'm not to him though, that's, whoa, oh my god, this speed, did you see that? <laughs> Nerf, please, no, Void Rays are absolutely fine. We don't need to nerf them, they deal 500 damage to an armored structure in about, what, 4 seconds? 4 seconds was it? Or, or 5, something like that anyway. 5 seconds, 500 damage by 3 Void Rays. Now those Phoenixes are again being harass uh, harassing a little bit, best they can. And that actually shows another s several workers killed by Crank for mana. Crank is very aggressive this game, he is trying to put a huge pressure on his enemy and be relentless. Now this oracle will try to go in, but unfortunately <laughs> it's not exactly going to happen because, well, Photon Cannon is here, Photon's Cannon is actually on the spot now. The use of Revelation to know what the enemy's unit composition is so that Crank can prepare accordingly. Yet another Void Ray added, interestingly enough, two Colossi being pu pu pushed out at the same time by Crank to fill up his army. The game has slowed mm, substantially. Now, uh, it would be nice for Crank to scout out this proxy pylon, for it might be might come quite handy and important, uh, especially if we note that mana is apparently going to rely on those... Uh, on those... <coughs> excuse me, gateway units uh, quite high. Now, those phoenixes uh, have been interrupted. Now that this guy is taking all the damage for the team, he's a real team player, he doesn't care. He just takes the damage, he takes the fall, and he's happy about it. Now, this Observer might end up in an unfortunate situation. Yep, bye-bye Observer. Now, uh, Crank has uh, destroyed enemy scout. Mana knows that he certainly has class I. It's good, it's good read for him. He is now assured of what to expect of his enemy. Well, this game is going to be a huge battle fight. We might actually expect a, a lot of bloodshed, a lot of brutality in an upcoming, upcoming team fight. I mean, a big zealot warp in. Both players are mag I near maxing out. They play it very carefully. They invest a lot of resources when it in technology. Just look at it: six thousand. 4500 by uh, Crank, so he is a little behind when it comes to tech. He doesn't have ground weapon. He's making ground weapons free, so that's a good investment for him. Wha whereas, when it comes to mana, he has decided to invest a little more in armor. Considering the fact that he's got so many Archons in his army, with only 10 HP, that armor might not exactly be the best investment in that case. But Blink, uh, Charge already developed, that means all those gateway units are becoming substantially stronger and substantially more dangerous. Mm -hmm. you know, this, is, this is interesting, that Phoenix is still taking a lot of damage, he's scouting out like a boss, he still knows what the enemy is doing, what the enemy is plotting, what the enemy is planning. Now, we might only expect more, better and interestingly enough in this upcoming combat. We will see what is the situation going to be in the future. It might actually end up in a huge and extended game of a series because both players seem particularly strong, they are well entrenched and they are going definitely for that big macro style. 
free base Protoss is not to be trifled if both players are researching everything possible when it comes to upgrades. Now uh, that pylon finally has been taken out. That proxy pylon has been taken out by several zealots, which is pretty good. It actually showed um, uh, that Clank has plus three weapons upgrades, so Mana is aware of the fact he already got sight some. He has better tech at the moment, but the enemy has better damage upgrade. Now that is a terrifying army. Immortals, Archons, High Templars, all the high tech units. We've practically, we've practically seen everything in Protoss Arsenal thus far. From mana and even more from Clank because he's added some Void Rays, a uh, play that I might think I think might come in handy and might be of severe importance when uh, everything is said and done. Now, mm, mana is moving out with his mothership call, so he can retreat at any time he wants, and that might be an actually a good moment to fight. That might be a night nice interception, and uh, Clank has already used his time warp, not in the best spot. Mana has used his one of his time warps as well. In order to block and stop his opponent, oh my god, 7 Colossi already, that's a lot of units. Now, Manada is not sure whether he wants to uh, go into that, and let's just look at the unit composition, that's a lot of units, a big combat is coming right ahead of that. And now we have a slaughterhouse, ladies and gentlemen, there is so much going on, we have, we see tower fuse, a lot of spells, I have no idea who's winning the for the time being, and I can tell now that Mana is not in the best of shapes, a beautiful warp in by Clank has forced Mana to retreat. He is going to lose that entire army to Krank, and let's just look at it. They are practically even when it comes to casualties, but Krank's warp in has managed to bring the tide to his side, effectively showing us just how important Proxy Pylon is for Protoss to continue and fuel their war effort. Had it not been for that particular Pylon here at the Nexus and at the fourth expansion, I believe Krank would not be in such a good shape as he is now. Now, both players have made the four bases. Another big warping of High Templar results in five Archons being already present on the battlefield. More Colossi being made by mana. Now, he would use and utilize a lot of benefits from adding up some air units. Now, Colossi are burning the enemies inside out and outside in. Those Zealots are going to be cooked alive. Now, we can see that Krank is on the move and on the offensive, the, the score settle is still pretty equal when it comes to unit stab, well not so much, Mana has a lot less than his enemy, <coughs> who is currently in the lead. Now wow, that was a big throw of a Colossus part, interestingly enough. Those High Templars are going to warp into Archons immediately and Krank is going to hit where it hurts, and that I, and by that I mean economy. This is a good idea, that Nexus is most likely going to fall, Archon has been, uh, was burned by those Colossi in an excellent fashion, now an expansion taken out, we can see that Krank is, uh, is getting slowly yet methodically an edge above his enemy, and the Lone Zealot being left to hit that assimilator time and time and time over again, so Krank has managed to create an edge for himself in this game, and let us not remember that an edge in, the, in a mirror is a pretty big deal, because players do possess similar methods, similar means to obtain their ends, and that is in fact pretty telling when it comes to results, potential results of this game. Now, Krank is a little behind when it comes to worker count, or is he? No, he's actually now ahead, but mm, this expansion is not yet saturated. Uh, this expansion has been saturated, <laughs> well, not saturated as well, because it's been mined out. Now, he is adding a lot of workers right here, and it's a good idea. He wants to kick in even stronger economy for the time being, <coughs> in order to prepare himself for a yet another confrontation with his little enemy with mana. Now, Crank is scouting with using that Observer to the maximum of its efficiency. Big warping of Zealots for mana supplies him with some Shock Troopers, but Zealots at this point are not exactly what you really want. They aren't the best of unit choices, uh, but unfortunately, what can you do when <laughs> other potential choices cost a hell lot of gas? And gas is always spurs in Protoss matchup. Just look at the proportion for Crank. That expansion, I believe, is being taken uh, mainly for gas and not for minerals, which are, at least for the time being, in abundance for that player. Now, 16 zealots to 12 zealots and a mortal mixed in, uh, more archons, more colossi, even a random starker, some sentries, and the mothership core versus 12 zealots, six arc, five archons, six colossi. Mana's in a tight spot, and he needs to think of something fast. Three immortals might be a good call and good idea to add to his army. 
three immortals have a lot of firepower versus everything armored and mechanical for instance versus potential um, colossi if they manage to get close enough and shoot them colossi deal incredible damage they are they are pretty durable especially thanks to the huge range so fifth base is mining and let's look yes ga gas is being mined out out of this base it's a priority mm, uh, apparently mana wishes to play a gambit and invest heavily in immortals he's adding a target Ooh, some unfortunate unfortunate shouter shoutcaster from usa has been kicked out of the game very unfortunate but but it happens nevertheless now those proxy pilots from mana are being taken out it's a good call it's important sacrifice sacrificial zealots be uh, are sent in they attack and charge and they go straight in for some harassment this fortune can is in a lot of trouble that uh, hero uh, hero probe has probably saved the day now mana has had time to warp in some reinforcements a dark shrine being added by crank special tactics in place ladies and gentlemen i like it more and more the longer that game uh, that game goes on the more interesting it gets well another mm, sacrificial zealot uh, division has been intercepted this time by crank so players are still very even almost eye to eye head to head and toe to toe we can only expect this game to escalate further. Now, in this potential engagement, Mana has the advantage when it comes to Immortal Count, and he is... Uh, boy, he's investing a lot into those Immortals, and Crank probably has seen a lot of those guys, which actually gives us an important tell. You know, when you see so many Immortals, now Crank perfectly knows where to expect the enemy. He doesn't have that many Zealots. He has invested in 12 Archons as his shield units, He's popping out plasma shields and armor at the same time, so he's investing heavily in those upgrades. Uh, a tendency which I believe uh, Mana could use as well. He needs those shields as upgrades as well in order to stay competitive and simply not lose in a brutal out of out uh, out of an exchange. Because uh, if he does fight with enemy being in a lead of uh, of potential uh, 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 upgrades. He will lose that team fight. Now a beautiful time walk placed here. That is severely slowing the enemy, but it's working both ways. That that mothership call had no chances. Now mana is play uh, crank is placing an aggressive pylon right here in the front line. Those archons are being intercepted. That is very bad. That's very bad news for him. The pylon has been destroyed, and now he's forced to retreat. It wasn't a good situation and play position to fight. Now <coughs> mana is doing a phenomenal job in controlling the battlefield in eliminating any potential pylons that could be used to drop an unexpected uh, launch party in his uh, in his base but we mustn't forget about an important factor in this game about crank's bank which is huge it's enormous it's gargantuan 63 probes yes 63 probes versus 44 probes it actually gives us a tell and if i'm correct we can see some tempests being made by mana another interesting play by mana i think he should think about adding potentially a cyber core a cybernetic score upgrades for for tempest and a beautiful play or by using of dark templars and zealot rush ins for that nexus has ma has made this one unoperational. Has made this one very uh, susceptible to a serious harass. That Templar took only two probes out, but who cares? It's still enough, and that might be a potentially big battle. But Crank doesn't want to engage. He's in a good situation. He is adding a lot of gateways. He's holding an incredible amount of money. And he is playing it slow and comfortably. Now Dark Dark Templar is having a field trip and a good daytime for him. Now this Nexus survives albeit barely and it is very easily destroyed by practically uh, just a visit from anything, say several zealots. But I think about anything in that case we're going to see a huge amount of units and those units are Archons. So the entire, entire Frank's army has went to that Nexus. And we have a fight! The fight is on! Tempests are bombarding from the distance! Immortals are on the front lines, but the sheer amount of Archons from Crank is incredible, it's bizarre, it's amazing! And Mana has yet again found himself on the retreat, or is he? He has managed to actually do it this time! 
Tempests are incredibly powerful. They are just raping, uh, raping uh, colossi alive. They have destroyed them completely, utterly, and without any mercy. Apparently, the gambit to make a lot of immortals in order to create a powerful front line has paid off. But so what? It paid off. The enemy has still an advantage when it comes to harassment and units lost tab. Just look. 454 workers versus 9 workers and another Nexus destroyed. Crank is definitely in the lead. Despite enemy's good play, he has managed to take on and control the field of the game thanks to his perfect, perfect positioning and situational use of the map. Now, that's important to remember uh, that Crank is far richer. He, is manage he has managed to deal a substantial blows to enemy's economy. And although uh, the last engagement was very unfavorable for him when it comes to uh, uh, army composition and exchanges of sheer forces, he is still better when it comes to sheer control of the map region. Now those zealots will probably clean those guys off, but that Nexus is severely damaged and Mana is finally on defensive. He is moving against enemy's, ne enemy's Nexus, that gas mining facility. And that is what he definitely needed. He needed to destroy some sort of an expansion of enemy, especially the one that has been the least mined out. And that was a good move by Mana, a move that his enemy could not potentially stop. Although he has minimum more resources lost, it's irrelevant because he is also far more mined. Now, another uh, zealot drop by Crank at the, at, the, at the rear, at the flank of his enemy has caused mana to lose yet another 400 resources and 100 seconds of uh, time worth in summoning in that nexus. Now, uh, Crank has decided to change his unit composition and invest heavily in Zealots and Starkers. And boy, do we have a lot of Starkers. That's 25 Starkers and 19 Zealots. Interestingly enough, uh, he is low on resources. I believe that is going to be used in order to snipe down those Tempests and Colossi. I am not exactly sure whether he will manage to do that uh, but mm, as we can tell uh, mana doesn't have the strongest front shield at the time being uh, for immortals mm, is certainly uh, going to prove useful against those guys and now uh, Krang will have to hope for some sort of uh, outmaneuvering his enemy but what can he do against those tempests when colossi are simply destroyed Pondered and annihilated Tempest, although not, upgrade, uh, not upgraded at all, have proven to be an incredibly powerful, useful and destructive unit as we know it. Now, this army is being seen by the Observer, so that Colossi is dead and without any Colossi, Crank knows it's time to retreat. He is losing the control of this game. Uh, he is, the victory that he actually had in perspective is slipping away and that's because Mana was more was more flexible. He invested in Tempest in those powerful uh, high rather high DPS units for well, Protoss army with huge range and uh, great, great potential of harassing enemies from big distances like that with the use of the of the observer. It forces Crank into a very unpleasant situation because he can't fight a position war when the enemy sees him completely. And he is forced to give away that Nexus yet again with 10 probes mining. It is very unfortunate but he simply knows that fighting an enemy with so many Colossi, Immortals and Tempest is at the moment out of the question. An excellent play by, by Mana who, despite suffering heavy economical losses, have been more effective with the use of the money and has created a better unit combination. Now he's starting to utilize Dark Templars as his own to harass his enemy and cause him severe damage as well. Now that's a good decision. Uh, it forces uh, Crank to create some observers, although it might be too late, especially if those probes are intercepted and bo oh my god, they are! Now this army is not in the best of shape and situations. It has to retreat because Dark Templar are here Tempests are still chasing them. They are forced into a position of no retreat and no return. If they are, if if Mana will manage to actually corner uh, Crank, Crank will be forced not only not to dance and retreat, but to take a fight in very unfavorable circumstances. And we can see that he is 
losing more and more, ten, almost 10,000 resources more of units lost at, for the time being, he is not investing his money uh, reasonably. He had 4,000 back, but it, but Mana has managed to nullify that advantage completely thanks to an excellent play. Now those zealots are dying as well. It's very random, it's very unfortunate, with 87 supply he is in a tough spot and I'm not sure whether he will manage to actually do it. The enemy is severely out damaging him, Tempest, Colossi and Archon Front Shield, not to mention Immortals and Dark Templars, has proven to be extremely effective. Now those uh, stalkers have managed to blink away from high ground, but you can escape only for as long until you are uh, cornered and that might be the case in this scenario, those stalkers have nowhere to go and nowhere to run and even some storms are being added by uh, Mana who has used every single unit except Mothership, Core and Carrier in Protoss Arsenal. Now those Starkers are mm, paying ha high for their lives but they are losing and that's GG Crank knew that he is out of this game. Despite having a better economical lead, Mana has managed to outplay him when it comes to unit composition, decisions and investment. That kinetic overload on uh, Colossi because I believe that uh, Tempest deal uh, 80 damage to Colossi due to them being massive units treated as A units as well has turned the tide destroyed uh, Crank's Colossi count to zero and that has proven to be the pivotal and changing point of the game and with that reflection I bid you guys farewell good night and I hope you enjoyed this excellent amazing and simply breathtaking game between those two professional impressive and amazing players see you around next time JJ signing out